So classically, someone with asymptomatic bone metastases, whether they're androgen sensitive or castration resistant, are really not taking any form of analgesic that would be correlated with that particular uh, location of a bone metastases. Um, and interesting, at least in my experience, uh, trying to ascertain oftentimes whether someone's complaining or not of pain is a, can be very varied. Uh, certain um, uh, sociological groups, certain men with different historical backgrounds, age, sometimes generational issues, are more or less likely to complain about pain. Pain is very subjective. Um, so that can be very challenging as a clinician, and despite the fact that the patient may have obvious bone metastases. Um, oftentimes I try to get their caregiver, which is typically their wives, involved and say, you know, are they complaining of pain ha that the he doesn't want to tell me? Uh, are you seeing him take on large quantities of non-narcotic over-the-counter medications, which can oftentimes be an indication that they're subjectively worsening. You know, it's interesting in that a lot of my patients, I think they don't want to oftentimes tell me they're having pain. Perhaps it's maybe to not disappoint me, their, their physician who's treating them, or maybe perhaps they're fearful that by telling me they have pain, maybe they think I'll now suggest additional therapies and maybe that further lets them come to a recognition that their disease is advancing. So there are these sort of subtle subconscious things that I think we need to be more and more cognizant of. Now historically, we didn't have uh, many quality therapeutics to help men who had symptomatic bone uh, metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer other than uh, narcotic analgesics. We still have them, we have more choices whether they're transdermal, oral, uh, sublingual, intravenous, sub-Q, et cetera. But what we now have are some non-narcotic alternatives to, uh, cr uh, to, to minimize bone pain, as well as to prevent complications of, of skeletal related events. Um, you know, virtually all of the uh, recently uh, up, um, approved, or at least most of the recently approved castration resistant prostate cancer therapeutics have had a, a good impact on decreasing skeletal related events. Um, but again, we always have to look at that literature in terms of the actual palliation for pain uh, and, and, and put that into the context of what I was saying earlier. Where do these bone metastases occur? Well, they can occur in, you know, it, within the axial spine. They can occur in the appendicular skeleton. They can occur uh, in the scapula. Uh, in the femur, they can occur in ribs, uh, they, in, in the humerus, uh, in the calvarium, or in the skull. Uh, and there is, um, there, depending upon the data sets that you look at, there can be a preponderance to be more centrally located. Interestingly, there's some data that suggests that patients who have uh, metastases outside or in the peripheral area of bone, it's usually, uh, or can suggest a worse prognosis.